Just when you thought Lewis Hamilton was snapping that winless streak, it was lucky 13 for Max Verstappen. Welcome back to Motorsport 101. Welcome to episode 405 of Motorsport 101. I'm your friendly neighbor and host, Dre Harrison. And, well, Formula One is back in America. We love it. The second American Grand Prix of the year. I can't I still find it hard to believe we're doing three of these next year. But here we are. The Circuit of the Americas back. A record attendance for them this weekend. Apparently over 440,000 in the house over the course of the three days. And uh, they saw... Dare I say it? The best Formula One race we've had this year? I think it's in the conversation, certainly. But uh, introducing us as we talk about this fantastic race, if you go around the horn. First up, RJ O'Connell. How's it going, big man? Uh, Thank you very, very much for having me on. Uh, What a wild weekend this was. I was was there. I took it all in. I got to see... Most of the 440,000 estimated attendees uh, mm. in the house. I got to sit into some very edgy press conferences. I got to <laughs> ask Logan Sargent his first question since being provisionally announced as Williams' new driver for the 2023 season. Super mm. lights points pending. Uh, I got to eat some good barbecue. I got to eat some not so good barbecue, some oh. passable barbecue. Um, but, you know, who doesn't like barbecue when it's free? Uh, I suppose. <laughs> right. Um, God, there was a lot to take in just seeing some of the cars up close through the car presentations. Um, the atmosphere was so great. It's like, I know Formula One's chasing destination events, but there is no way they can take for granted what good thing they have going here just because Austin is not a top 20 media market in the United States. I know it's tempting, but people are coming to the middle of bub fuck nowhere on the outskirts of Austin. That's a very good sign indeed. And yeah, I know they're chasing the big old destination bag, but that is very promising indeed. Cam Buckley, how's it going down there? Uh, it's going, it's just going great. You know, the, the preseason prediction, uh, it went through again. Which, which one was this? Uh, Red Bull sweeping. Oh, championships. you know, ignore the fact that, you know, they might've had a few too many sandwiches along the way. May have not <laughs> quite getting a tax rebate incorrectly. 70, you know, shout out to Boris Johnson for uh, seventy-five you know, doing his thing. thousand lineup. That's the other thing too. When I got up in the air to go to the track on Thursday morning, Liz Truss was still Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. <laughs> and when I landed in Austin, we had a new Prime Minister. Liz Truss, Liz Truss's entire premiership lasted let. Did not last as long as the break between the second to last round of the Super Formula Championship and the final round coming up this weekend. RJ, it didn't last as long as Charles Leclerc's championship lead this year. (sighs) It didn't last as long as it had a lettuce. It lasted the same amount of days as Lewis Hamilton's car number, which kind of says it all, really. Hashtag blessed. So much so because we talk politics on this show every once in a while. We had to bring in Mr. Political Man himself, the return of the king. It's Ryan Eric King. <laughs> hey, Ryan, how's it going, big man? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm back. Uh, you know, just like a certain somebody we thought was going to be back, but decided to pull out the day before. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. King, did you, did, 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 please don't ever compare yourself to Boris Johnson again. <laughs> I mean, we're, bo- we're both born in New York. <laughs> no. No, no, no. This is, a, this is a form of self-loathing that I will not tolerate on this podcast. <laughs> There's levels. I know, I know we are all experts in self-depreciation, but this is too much. This is just abuse. It's self-abuse. I can't tolerate that here, but we're delighted. Oh, giving things ha- preseason prediction is looking a bit like the Jets O line right now. <laughs> well, all I know is I'm here to abuse some people over some financial irregularities. 
Hey, <laughs> dude, that I'm telling you what, that Kristen Horner, Zach Brown team principal's tech press conference was what well, I thought that was the closest thing I think we had, like two people throwing hands at a Formula One press conference. I don't know how they resist the urge to like cut each other off, speak out of turn, throw throw hands at each other like it's a John Jones, Daniel Cormier press weigh in. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. ha- halfway. Just- Just Capito was just here to like, all right, I'm announcing my new provisional driver candidate, and then I am just putting the microphone down and letting them have the floor. You you, you know it's wild when Sky Sports F1 actually actively promotes a team boss's press conference for Saturday afternoon, and I'm just like, we have gone too far. (laughs) This is like Formula One's version of Jurassic Park. Like we, sh- like, we should have stopped to think, should we do something like this? And to be fair, it Next didn't they're going to get Kanye West to moderate it. Oh, <laughs> oh no. You know, we- this whole weekend was just like Brad Pitt's here a couple weeks after some very grim headlines about his uh, divorce mm. with Angelina Jolie. He's here to promote the new Formula One film. And it's just like, I guess, thank goodness for Kanye West for taking the heat off? I guess. Question mark? <laughs> That's a strange way of looking at it, but I'm like, I can't say you're wrong. <laughs> like, it's, it's 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 a trip, let me tell you. So, we've got a full panel coming up on episode 405. We'll be talking about Max Verstappen's record tying 13th win of the 2022 season he joins a very very special club we'll get into that in a minute we will talk about well fernando alonso taking flight at 185 miles an hour thanks to lance stroll and the uh follow-up that's come as a direct result of it because uh it is ugly off on the track and off it let me tell you We'll also be talking more about Red Bull. I know you must be really, really sick of us talking about Red Bull if you're a Lewis Hamilton fan by now, but we kind of have to talk about the fact that their team owner died. There's, it's, we've got to break it down, unfortunately. And we'll talk about some more to do with Coda in general. But before we get into all of that, let's, let's break down where you can find this so we can find this at our website, motorsport101.com, for written reviews as well if you want bonus content from yours truly on this race and everything to do outside of it too, and MotoGP at Malaysia. We'll be, that'll be the next episode, by the way. Um, you can follow us on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Motorsport 101 or at Motorsport 101 if you're using the new YouTube at handle feature or at facebook.com, same slash, Twitter at Motorsport underscore 101 and our personal handles at House 101 HD at RJ O'Connell at C Buckley 917 and at Ryan Eric King. Been a while since I've done all four. Uh, and if you really like us, you can back us financially on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash motorsport 101. If you want to support us, five bucks gets you early access to uh, all these episodes of the day before they go live to the public. You can upgrade to the $10 version and you can listen to these shows live as they're being recorded. Um, if you checked that out already. Jason's in the studio watching along saying hi. If you're in the chat as well, say hi. We might drop you in the episode. Who knows? Um, check us out already on all that all that on our website, patreon.com forward slash postboard. All the details are on there. Check it out already. Right. Let's get into 2022 United States Grand Prix right after this. It's a victory that will give Red Bull the Constructors' Championship in 2022. It's celebrations for team and for driver on such a poignant weekend. Max Verstappen wins the United States Grand Prix. Max Verstappen, you are world champion. We are world champions. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dietrich Mateschitz, for everything that you have done. Now, this one was for Dietrich. And uh, yeah, congrats, guys. What an amazing season to win also the Constructors. Um, you guys really deserve it. Lucky 13 for Max Verstappen in the Circuit of the Americas, becoming just the third driver in history to win 13 races in an F1 season. Michael Schumacher and Sebastian Vettel being the other two. Um, yeah, he had to work extra hard for this one, though. Final stop of the race with 22 laps to go. <laughs> uh, Red Bull's wheel gun doesn't work during his final pit stop. Has to get the backup gun out. 
Uh, it was an 11 second stop. It put him down to third. He had to go past Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton. Yes, Lewis Hamilton led significant laps in this race. Somehow. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but with, with a handful of laps to go, Verstappen, using a hell of a lunch into turn 12, took the lead, would go on to win by five seconds. And not only that, because of Ferrari's struggles, well, mostly not their fault this weekend, to be fair, asked George. Red Bull wins the Constructors' Championship for the first time since 2013, their fifth Constructors' title as a team. Congratulations to Red Bull Racing. I'm sure everybody on Twitter was absolutely delighted to get behind Red Bull winning their first Constructors' title in nine years. Isn't that right, guys? Guys, I remember, um, <laughs> do you remember when John Cena was at the peak of his power? And for some of you younger listeners, yes, the guy from the Honda commercials and the host of Wipeout he used to be a <laughs> full time professional wrestler. And he was like at the top of his game. But it felt like every time that he that he was wrestling for the world title, he was always billed as the perpetual underdog and that he always had to overcome the odds. Right. Um, and people got tired of that. People got tired of the fact that John Cena always had to overcome the odds despite clearly being the top man in his profession by a mile and a stretch. That is Matt's, that is a microcosm of Max Verstappen in 2022. <laughs> because in most situations, a 12 second pit stop might as well be a death sentence to any prospects you have of winning a race in this day and age. And I thought this was going to be Lewis Hamilton's day to break the winless drought and extend his run of consecutive winning seasons to 16. He's got new upgrades on the car. He loves this track. And he's got a healthy margin and a Charles Leclerc's worth of buffer. Then Matt's pet gets past Leclerc. Then Matt starts eating into that deficit. Then Matt gets into DRS range and... It's like he got the turbo pickup in a wipeout game and just zip right past he threw it. Threw the mushroom into his airbox. <laughs> My dude hit the hyper thrust. Oh yeah. That's tr- yeah. This is Master Sappens 2022 in a nutshell. The next one gives him the single season record. So who we need he, a pro- uh, who does he share that single season wins record with right now? Um some guys named Michael and Sebastian. We'll talk about Sebastian in a bit, but mm. like Pretty good. I want to propose something on the table. Formula One booking committee, hear me out. So okay. I want I want to win for Sergio Perez this coming weekend in Mexico City. That's going sure. to trigger a two week national holiday. Everybody's going to love it. <laughs> then we go to Sao Paulo in Brazil. Go Lula. Hamilton gets that win to keep his streak alive. And then we go to Abu Dhabi and Verstappen breaks the record by flattening everybody with a comfortable pull to win by like a minute. I need, I need this booking committee in Bristol. I, I was very impressed by this race, by the way. It was the best we can do. Best we can do is running up the score violently. <laughs> um, you know, Red Bull's 2022 almost has an air of Ferrari's 2002 season, doesn't it? The Feels general distaste from everyone involved, Nobody accusations of uh, FIA favoritism, hashtag uh, Ferrari International Assistance, mm. <laughs> and the ability to simply brute force a win no matter the situation. Cam, when do they try and arrange a photo finish only for Sergio to like inch ahead? Does that happen in Mexico? <laughs> no, no, no. You know, if it happens in Mexico, it's going to be the other way around where Max accidentally wins. The Mexican <laughs> no, he won't leave that place alive. No, no, no. no. It's like Sergio's dad is the one who kills him if that happens. <laughs> it'll, be the least ha- it'll be the first time you'll ever see him not smiling. <laughs> I mean, this- M- Max had lost this race. Mm. Lewis in a Mercedes that was just quick enough to be enough of a threat on those tires at this track with Lewis driving out of his mind. Forced to undercut. Max makes the pit stop. They flub the left front tire change. And then you're watching the laps go down. He gets past Leclerc because Ferrari are just outgunned at this point. Mm. They are. They have now assumed Mercedes' position as they're in range, but they're not really capable. 
Um, poor Carlos signs. Yeah, it's now Carlos signs sympathy corner taking over from Valtteri Bottas last year. Although <laughs> it's hard to have sympathy for Valtteri when he just goes flying off the road in the dry. Those yeah. wind gusts are tough, man. Oh yeah, significant I, wind here. Apparently that's what happened. Yeah, I'm apparently fifteen aside. plus mile an hour tailwinds. Like, it, felt, I hit- it felt good. It felt good for me because I wasn't roasting in the Texas heat. <laughs> oh yeah. I like I, I hereby like revoke all criticism of Nico Rosberg in twenty fifteen when he claimed the gust of wind took him out. Like it happens. It is a thing. <laughs> it is a thing. But yep. we're watching the lap count waning. The gap is stable at the front. Does Lewis hold on? No. No. Nope. <laughs> No, when Max dropped the hammer, it was the gap was coming down seemingly corner by corner. He had 40 kph down the back straight when he got Lewis. When he got into DRS, he had, a, he had the golden mushroom. <laughs> I thought I thought it was going to take him a lap. No, no my, f- first time he was really in range. He, he hit the bullet bill button. It was just. Look, like it's just, it just, because I think that they had the, they had it on the onboard at the time he was going to overtake him for the majority of his run on the back straight, and it's just like, where's the corner? He keeps getting closer. Like, like and just next to me, you know, he's he's ahead of him, and that's it. The race is over. God bless him. Lewis tries, but yeah, man. Lewis, Lewis, Lewis did all well. Lewis could, all Lewis could do in response is absolutely root his hard tires. Max being on the mediums that were supposed to only last 18 laps, they lasted 21 with pace mm. to spare. Mm. And Max eventually wins by five seconds, just over five seconds to protect himself for any track limits penalties because these two were pushing so hard that they used up all of their track limits jokers trying to beat one another. <laughs> <laughs> I, f- I mean, King, what did you make of it all? <laughs> oh, man. It, it seemed like. It seemed like Verstappen knew he had to make the mediums last to the end, and if he was gonna make a if he was gonna make a attack for the lead, it was probably gonna be the only chance he gets, and he made that chance count. Yeah, it's that. That's pretty much what it was. I mean, Cam's spot on for what it's worth. I mean. You look at that final stint again. He came out, I think it was something like six and a half seconds behind Hamilton after that 11 second pit stop came through. He won by five. Like, even if the, and there was rumblings about this towards the end of Max might get clocked for track limits because both he and Hamilton were already given the black and white flag as a warning for track limits excursions. Um, even with the five second penalty, Max still would have won. I just, it's, it's just not fair. Now, that that final stint was twenty one laps long, and and Verstappen turned a six and a half deficit into winning by five. Like it's the old phrase our old co host AJ used to come out with: you don't win the title on your good days, you win them on your bad days. And this was a bad day, Rebel put a wrench in their own plans and they still found a way to win. Um, it's, it's, it go like it goes to say the first half of that race is like Max was driving at 70%. It's, it's, it's scary how fast this combination is. Charles couldn't stay with him. Merck just isn't quite there yet, you know, and as Cam alluded to superb bit of driving from Lewis to even, Give, give, you know. So God give. loves a trier. He did <laughs> everything he could. Yeah, that's the nearest Hamilton's gotten to a win this year. And man, did he have to work for it. And you could see he was over the limit. He he butchered his own hard tires. And that was the race tire to be on. And he butchered them, just trying to stay with him. And, you know, it just, it just felt so futile seeing Max chase him down and win. This is I really thought this was going to be the weekend that it gets on the board. Now it's just like if it doesn't we, happen we at Sao Paulo, where when's it going to? Ha- we know what the Honda is like at high altitude. Mm. Um, I mean, for, we were all watching it in the Discord together, and the gap was pretty stable for about eight laps, and then it's like the whole body language of the Red Bull changed suddenly. Oh, he's taking six, seven tens out of him a lap. Yeah, once that gap started coming down, it was just like, bro, this is... I think that's the other thing as well, in combination with this car. uh, Max's tire preservation, I don't think, gets talked about enough. 
those medium tires from straight from Pirelli, however much we believe them these days, <laughs> um, was designed to last 18 laps. Maximum. He made them last 21 against an equivalently fresh set of hards. And we know the W13 is arguably too kind to its tires. It doesn't put enough energy into them to really wear them out. Mm. It's been a constant Merck's complaint over the season that they don't get the heat into them fast enough. And yeah, like, like we're being generous when we say 18 laps for the mediums on Paredes. That was the upper end of the range. They said as low as 12 in some cases. And some guys came in after 10 or 11 laps on that medium sit at the start of the race. Yes, fuel so was the undercut a bit was uh, undercut was very strong here, and mm. even if they hadn't botched the pit stop, but on Compact it looks like Lewis was going to get Max anyway. But given the pace disparity, it would have been more of a formality than it actually was. Yeah, yeah, like just the confidence of Red Bull even before the error happened. Just like yeah, we, we can we can do mediums. That's cool. Merck's had to go medium hard hard. Red Bull went medium hard medium. And it, it, it just Red Rebels operating in a different in a different postcode to everybody else right now. It's it's utterly ridiculous how, how well they're driving. And yeah, just Max is a, Max is busted. He's just, he's the, as busted. The constructors' as championship was well earned. Now I'll say this: Sergio Perez, he did his part. Everybody did their part mm. to a make this happen. Phenomenal overtake on uh, George. Oh yeah, to uh, oh, no. defend position up out of the pits. Yeah, he did this with a kind of busted car, which we'll we'll mention that in passing. But like, yeah, solid race, solid way to wrap up a constructors championship. Um, you know, I have my doubts that Christian Horner could still get it done about four or five years ago, but I'm happy to be proven wrong in this instance. And to be fair, they immediately celebrated by hijacking Shaq's car. Which I thought was a which I thought was a baller move on their part. Dude, that's the, that's the <laughs> other thing too about this event. Like I, I I don't really connect with a lot of celebrity culture, not because I'm like edgy and like oh, just like sometimes I just like I'm too wrapped up in my own bullshit. I did not know who Ed Sh- that Ed Sheeran had walked past me unless I'd like seen Ed Sheeran on the screens just seconds ago <laughs> with a cam- with a graphic that said this is Ed Sheeran recording artist, and then he walks past me. Shaquille O'Neal, on the other hand, oh. if not mistaking this dude. <laughs> I know he's not seven feet tall and 300 pounds of lean muscle like he used to be in his playing prime, but... He's still seven foot dude. tall. <laughs> dude, don't get it twisted. He is still happily seven feet tall. I saw a picture of him yesterday, him arm and arm of Simone Balls. I thought it was completely unfair. Um, <laughs> it was it was like Shaq was taking a picture of one of his kids. It's just, it's just not fair. Fastball special. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like they hijacked Shaq's car, got the trophy, and I, I, can I just say, a little bit cheeky that uh, you know Red Bull have been given a bligh to uh, negotiate their cost cap. Um, overspend, um, and then of course people couldn't wait to jump on the fact that they were celebrating the constructors' title. Like, what were you, what, what were you thinking they were going to do? Uh, like, <laughs> they were going to, or they were better going yet, to accept we'll, their- we're, we're, we're going <laughs> to get into it later. But that, oh, you must not be all that sad, given that you're celebrating. You've just won the biggest prize in the sport. We're not celebrating. So we will, that- we will take our constructors' championship uh, somberly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we'll, we'll, we'll give them the golf clap we'll give them the golf clap in the background yes yes we want we, we want we won the trophy yeah yeah i don't know how lando norris hit a ball th- had a golf ball 300 feet on a virtual drive i didn't know i didn't think that man was built for that i don't know how lando norris had such a great final stint the mclaren was trash this weekend We'll yeah. get into that in a bit. Mm, we talk mm, about like mm. other stuff that was good for this race, dude. That was solid. I didn't want to call this race the year just because I was there, but like, oh yeah, <sighs> it, it's between that and Silverstone, and um, I think this was a this was better for longer. Silverstone, I, Silverstone's last ten laps were bonkers, like the best ten laps of racing you'll see all year. But Silverstone was kind of dull until that final safety car. Like, we had a bit more car to car action here. A lot yeah. more actually. There was there was actually kind of all the way up through up throughout the field. Yeah. It's like King, this one or Silverstone, what do you reckon? Maybe Saudi Arabia? 
Maybe Bahrain? Mm, I'd go with this one. I'm leaning towards this one. Mm, mm. I think I am too. I'd have, I'd have to give that some thought, but I, I, I think it's close. But I think it's the first time I've gone to a 9 out of 10 on my scale for, for ra- rating races this year. So I think it's going to be Kota. I, have to, I, have to bring, I, thought, I thought you handed Silverstone, and are you fucking kidding me out of 10? I, no, 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 no. The last 10 laps I did. Uh, I, said, I said it was a four out of ten race until the final safety car, and I think I balanced it out for an eight. Mm. I was like, "I'll be generous." <laughs> I'll, I'll go the extra half point. I'm gonna give this a nine and a half. I really enjoyed this race. Fair, no, it's nope. completely fine. solid nine and nine, solid nine and a half. Guess family barbecue brisket sandwiches out of ten. Mm, mm. Uh, but it, they were a bit small, but good thirty dollars spent. <laughs> Though I was a bit worried after turn one that it was going to be a doubt of a race. I, I was just too. <laughs> yeah. Um, RIP to any semblance of Carlos signs a season going well. Ugh. And a spear by Reigns. Wait, sorry, that's George Russell's music. Um, <laughs> it's it's not ideal. Um, we're not towards the end of the show, but uh, we got to talk about the really big collision. No, 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 the other one. Um, and this was Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso. Um, this was a 185 mile an hour crash b- between the two of them. Lance Stroll's defending his position from Fernando Alonso. Like, Lance, who I believe was running fifth at this point. Um, yes, you know. we were talking in our Discord about how if they can keep this together. Aston Martin is going to have their best result of the year by a mile. Their, their best result was a team since since their existence. Um, well, in, in green form anyway. But yeah, Lance Stroll was running fifth. Fernando Alonso off the first lap of the restart from Bottas's safety car. Pulls to the left on the back straight on the run towards 12. Lance Stroll looks in his wing mirror, turns left towards him when Alonso's already got I'd say front wheel to wheel wheel alongside. They hit each other. Fernando goes airborne, almost ends up in the gap in the fence, which is terrifying when you look back at it now. His car was two wheels up in the air, airborne. Lance Stroll's tire explodes in the same time as well. Stroll is out. Alonso is somehow able to continue. (laughs) I, I, any Marcus Ericsson fans out there? Um, to be fair, Marcus Ericsson was there this weekend in the uh, Alfa Romeo garage. They, they must have given us that Leonardo DiCaprio finger point. Like, well, I've seen this story before. Uh, Alonso was able to keep going. Remember that. It becomes important later. And was able to finish the race in seventh. Stroll was um, did not finish, obviously. And then in the stewards meeting afterwards, he was, he was hit with a three-place grid penalty for the Mexican Grand Prix this weekend and two penalty points on his license. Also, we fought because it turns out Haas lodged a post-race protest into the result and the fact that two of the cars in in the field, and that was Sergio Perez, who was later cleared, um, and Fernando Alonso both had dangly parts of their car and that they should have been given the black and orange meatball flag for forced repairs. Respect um, the meatball. Respect the meatball. Um, unfortunately, there was no meatball in, in in this case. Haas protested the result. They were called to the stewards again. Haas launched a successful protest as it stands, um, and Alonso was hit with a 30-second time penalty Ooh. post-race dropping him from 7th to 15th. Um, Perez was cleared, as I mentioned earlier, um, but they deemed that Alpine was responsible for releasing Fernando Alonso's car in an unsafe condition. And as a result, he was hit with a 30-second time penalty. Alpine has appealed this protest. Um, They're saying that Haas might have lodged the protest too late. It will be here. It will be heard tomorrow as we were as we we're recording this on wednesday um so we'll, we'll, we'll update you on that one next week but um this might still get appealed but as it stands alonso finishes 15th and not seventh a huge swing in the final results gentlemen first of all what did you make of the incident and then the follow-up because this is a messy one um 
I was amazed that Fernando seemed very, very chill about it when me and the other riders spoke with him after the race. Mm. And of course, it helps that he doesn't want to throw his future teammate under the bus before he even receives his Aston Martin company clothes, mind you. Yeah. That's going to come later. I assure you of that. Um, very scary incident. Alonzo was very lucky that he didn't get airborne. I think his last second reach for the brakes to lock him up was what prevented him from getting like super, super airborne. And at the time when I was, I, I wanted to ask him like, Fernando, does this, does this outcome of taking a car that was a few feet up in the air uh, to a seventh place finish on the road, does that balance out all the times when you felt like you had a car that could score good points and then be it for mechanical misfortunes or whatnot, it just didn't come out? Did you feel like that balance in books? And I didn't get to ask him that. And mm. apparently it was a blessing that I did because, you know, as it stands right now, he didn't get to keep any of those points. And from just from a, like, I guess from like a, uh, from a layman's perspective, Alonzo was given six times the penalty that George Russell got for broadsiding into Carlos Sainz and taking him out of the race. Even though Alonzo was the one uh, on the wrong end of what I could say, I'm not one of those people that have a weird hate motor for Lance Stroll, but my dude, that's one of the stupidest bits of driving that I've seen. And it cost you your best result of the season. Yeah. You know, um, it was a uh, felony. <laughs> that was some felony driving. Yeah. Um, if you did that in a sim racing league, you'd be banned for 2,000 years. Um, you cannot move in reaction that late. No. You can't. It's, and the thing is, it's not like you could say he wasn't spatially aware. On the onboard, you see him look in the mirror and then do a very <laughs> deliberate left turn. Did you hear yeah. what he said out in the in the media pen afterwards? He said it left him enough room. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Jesus the words of Yuki Christ. Tsunoda, get your get an MRI. Get your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I I I can't I can't disagree with anything that what's been said here. This was. This is about as dangerous a move as it gets in Formula One. You get like subtly dangerous. Like, it's not like Lance Stroll cuts across like six lanes of traffic to wipe somebody out, but it's like, it's, it's subtle, but it's like so, so dangerous. You can't turn into a guy who's already alongside you. And, uh, sir, you've, and it's not the first time. It's not time. that he wasn't no, already alongside. He, he wasn't him. alongside. It's the fact that, like, the way you describe the accident, I think we need to point out to viewers. Like, mm. that initial movement, like, that initial set of events took place in the span of a few seconds. Mm. Alonso, like, Alonso had no time to react to Stroll moving in front of him. Right. After he moved, after he moved to overtake. The, that collision was going to happen. Yeah, Lance Stroll made that collision happen. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's, all, that. that's all entirely fair. Um, what's the best way to describe in this? I think Lance is a very lucky boy. He only got three places on the grid for next round for this. He's this a was, very lucky boy that the he fact, got directed. What was a worse? The mm. fact that Alonzo, in effect, got a significantly larger penalty than Lance did for this incident is a fucking disgrace. This is why people don't trust the FIA. But, but the thing is that the reason why we got the situation is because uh, collisions are very subjective incidents mm -hmm. and the allowed penalties for, for such collisions are just as widely varied as they are subjective they are. With, with a black and orange flag. It's a hard penalty. There's no, there's no conversation. It's either you, you got the black and the black and orange, or you didn't get the black and orange, except yeah. you didn't get the black and orange because they never flew it until after the race, <sighs> which again, circles back to the point where uh, the race director has no controls over protests. So, the race director, uh, Niels Vinich, decided not to give Alonso a black and orange. 
and then Haas protests after the race to the stewards that Alonso should have gotten a black and orange, and the stewards agreed with Haas over the race director. Why oh. don't Michael Massey Pablo, do this? Pablo Elizade said it best that like race control and the stewards need marriage counseling. <laughs> and this is on the weekend where one of the decisions made uh, after the, the Suzuka recovery vehicle incident was that uh, Eduardo Freitas is going back to WEC for at least the rest of this year. He's not doing F1 anymore. Mm. <sighs> well, as the thing is, is that Haas has got a valid reason to complain in the sense of Kevin Magnussen has been hit with the black and orange three times this season already. Yeah. If anyone's going to feel hard done by on a meatball call, or in this case, the lack of a meatball call, it's them. Yeah. I'm not blaming <laughs> them for doing that. The, th- the thing is with this is that I, I I don't disagree. I do believe they are justified in throwing that protest because they've fallen into all of this multiple times mm. with um, Magnuson, with it keeps breaking front wings. Uh, actually, the reason why Perez was in on this protest but was cleared is that his front wing was broken in very much the same way. Uh, end plate hanging off, but that end plate decided to quote unquote fix itself and evacuate the building. Yeah. Um, I just can't believe he only got a three place grid penalty for what is, in my opinion, the single worst piece of driving I've seen this year in F1. I, I, th- I think it was largely du- due to. I like to call the Moss defense where where Alonso goes in there and pleads for Lance Stroll, which yeah. he shouldn't have done. Yeah, Fernando Alonso openly admitted afterwards that in the stewards' office that he said it was a racing incident. And the stewards do take other drivers' opinions on board. I've seen it happen with like qualifying blocks, for example. Remember when Mazepin um, did it to Sebastian Vettel at Zandvoort last year? Remember Nikita Mazepin? Let's not. I wish I did. Um, but, <laughs> but I remember they both got called into the stewards and Vettel said, look, it happened. Nikita had Mick in front of him. Concertina effect. It happens. Not a big deal. And then the stewards were like, okay, no further action. Cool. Well, we'll let this one go. So they do take drivers' opinions on board for things like this. Um, and Alonso was like, eh, it happens. Alonso being surprisingly Probably shouldn't nice. happen. It the, probably shouldn't happen. No, I'm I'm not sure it should, but it did. I think in this case, I think King's absolutely spot on. I think I think Alonso took pity on his future teammate, and the stewards were like, "All right, we'll give you the weakest possible penalty we can give you, which is free grid places." Which is the same. From, do you remember when Verstappen got hit with free grid places off the Monza? And compare that to this. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. What in the hell? Um, why Why would Michael Massey do this? I know. Like, I thought we fixed Stewart in for the 15th time this year. I thought we fixed Stewart in. And yeah, the stewards and the and race, the race control not being on the same page is not a good look for anybody involved here. Um, and the, the, the point I was going to ask, the question I was going to ask you is, you guys here is, when is a car deemed unsafe because that's what i don't uh, that's what i don't know the stewards clearly thought that alonso should have been meatballed the car was largely fine obviously we're talking about a dangly wing mirror here like well, the thing is dre is that that wing mirror mirror did eventually come off it did and if we throw it back to earlier in the season when um an alpha tauri jettison some of itself onto the racing surface and max picked that up and destroyed his floor in silverstone mm. could you imagine could you imagine the criticism if that same thing had happened to either lewis or max during their fight for the lead where they run over alonzo's wing mirror and it ruins their car oh boy it, yeah, it's, that yeah. like in the international sporting gold code that's usually the line of reasoning where you get you get the meatball flag if if the damage on your car is deemed a risk to either the driver themselves or other competitors. Mm. Remember, uh, remember Leclerc in twenty nineteen in Japan. Yeah, that damage where uh, he was hol- he he was one handing the car through one thirty R hanging onto his wing mirror. Right, right, uh, and eventually that debris, some of that came off and struck Lewis Hamilton's halo. 
Mm, mm. That's, that's tough. It's, it's, it's a difficult one. Because like I said, I've, I, I've had friends ask me about this and I've said to them, look, I don't know when a car is deemed too unsafe to be on a live racing track. <laughs> it's like, I don't know where you draw the line on something like that because we've seen flappy parts before get called. We've seen them not get called. How long is too long before you throw the meatball? There's a lot of ifs, buts, and maybes on on something like this. And if it, and it doesn't help when the race director and the stewards have differing opinions on this, because then we all look at the process and we all go, weren't you guys supposed to fix this at the, after the end of last year? Um, and here we are again. Another debatable issue where two major entities in the back officiating the sport can't agree and now we've got an appeal and a process and you know alonso like, who did nothing wrong has had his race com- potentially completely destroyed yeah, as a result it's like, of it it's like it would have been one thing <laughs> right if if they had black flagged him early on for this yeah and he didn't then go on the rest of that race also you know rest of the distance on that power unit i mean we know alpine is they don't last very long over at Alp. <laughs> um, only to then have that result stripped away. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a shit. It's well, a shit. We're, we're, like we're that, having... that's that's the nature of officiating, where like the stewards can't accept protests from teams during a race. Mm. And if the race director deemed Alonzo's car was safe, then it is safe. Right. It's 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 there. It's 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 his word that's final. But the then the, the stewards said that it wasn't. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what page? So they need to they need to get on. Who has the final? Yes, the, yes, the rule book is set up so they're not on the same page. But that's really doing a lot more harm than good these days. Mm. When people act cynical about Formula One's place at the pinna- as the pinnacle of motorsport, this is kind of what they're talking about. Because you'd think like the the registered trademark pinnacle of motorsport would be above this. I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 a debatable one, and uh, I'll be fascinated to hear about this appeals meeting that's happening tomorrow, and the outcome. We'll talk we'll talk about it more on next week's show. Um, on that one. Whew. Speaking of Red Bull, we talked about it a bit earlier, and uh, the, the 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 sport was hit with the news just literally minutes before um, Saturday qualifying that um, uh, Dietrich Mateswitz, the um, owner. Of, of of well part owner majority owner of Red Bull passed away this past weekend he was 78 um no doubt about it one of the most important people in the sports modern age i think that's fair to say back in two f1 teams the red bull ring in austria you've probably rooted for one of the drivers that have come through his academy at some point or another there's a great shot actually of the on the grid before the race on sunday of i don't, I don't know if it was on purpose i don't think it was but it was the all the red bull affiliated drivers that have been through their academy or was currently in it or in the past had all lined up side by side together like yuki sonoda sebastian vettel carlos signs pierre gas like I don't know if that was just a coincidence, but spooky stuff if that was the case. Um, but it's a complicated one, folks, and I'm sure we'll get into the reasons why, but just some general thoughts on Dietrich's passing because obviously it's a huge impact when it comes to where Formula One is today. I mean, that influence that Red Bull had uh, goes to virtually every corner of motorsport beyond Formula One as a sponsor or promoter, you name it. Uh, let's not forget when they first showed up in 1995, they were kind of a kind of an unknown in the world when they showed up as like the new title sponsor of a third year Sauber team. And then that became that eventually turned into one of the best decisions that I think he made as a promoter of the sport. He bought the flailing, underachieving corpse of Ford's last F1 program, their last full scale involvement. That would be Jaguar. And through that investment, turned them into one of the greatest dynasties in the sport, the one four in a row from 2010 to 2013, and another full set just this past weekend. Um, that that also turned into investing into one of the longtime minnows of the sport, Minardi, turning them into the Toro Rosso slash Alphatari that we know today that has brought through so many great young talents of the sport, like Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen. <sighs> 
there's a lot that Mad Shits has done good for the world of motorsport. And outside, it's also kind of it's tough to look past the fact that Dietrich Mattisitz was unabashedly socially and politically regressive. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll just bite your notes. He, he had abhorrent views on the world. He was an anti-immigrant and he endorsed Donald Trump at a lot of this stuff. And it's tough to go all. It's easy for me to say, because I never worked within the Red Bull family. Mm-hmm. But it's also tough for me to like bear my soul at somebody who endorses the kind of stuff that Mattishitz did away from the track. Mm. I do not want to go into the shitty, petty thing that people do and project the stances that he had into something that is a core belief instilled of everybody who works within the Red Bull and AlphaTauri organizations. In fact, mm. the fact that they have a, such a diverse working environment as they have is kind of it's kind of awesome in defiance of what what Mattishitz, what his beliefs were away from the track. Again, large C don't never never get into weird social po- parasocial relationships with CEOs. I think we all can learn that. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Um yeah, I can only echo a lot of RJ sentiments on this. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, and pretend to mourn for a fascist sympathizer, no matter which way you slice it. Um, but it's easy. It's easy to gather around, hold hands, wear black armbands and pay tribute. And look, the people within F1 have every right to. There's a lot of people in that paddock that owe that man a check. Um, you know, he he has probably done more for modern day motorsport in terms of backing it, you know, putting money where his mouth was and enabling so many jobs and careers than just about anybody else in modern day F1. And yeah, also at the same time, he had horrible, horrible views about the, about the world as a bigger picture. And that is complicated. That is, you know, it's, I'm not like I said, I'm not gonna sit here and mourn the guy, but I completely understand if somebody else would because you know, I think Sebastian Vettel was the one that really took was the one that really took a step back and was like, you know what, no comment when it first came out. He wore an armband in the end eventually, um, and raced with one on for him, which is understandable because again, Dietrich like pretty much funded his career early early doors. So I can, I can understand how someone, you know, might be very grateful for that and the way their life has turned out. So, yeah, these things are fucking complicated. Yeah, we're people not have in, layers. We're not you know? in these people's shoes. Um, and I'm not going to pretend was, like they are either. <laughs> it's It was a tough weekend because um, also down at Haas F1 team, one of mm. their own, Harvey Cook, a longtime garage technician, um, died at the age of 31 after Horrible a lengthy news. battle with cancer, which mm. is far too young. And it really reinforces that you just you have to enjoy the good times of the people that you love mm. no doubt i mean yeah this is it's it's one of those deeply conflicting moments as a motorsport fan and like i said it's that's 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 sometimes the beauty and the horror of sport you can be a success in spite of the person that you are and you know it's red bull is complicated i know I mean, RJ alluded to it as well. Like, I know multiple people that work for Red Bull Racing. They are genuinely one of the more diverse teams in the sport. Um, and I know people of color that work for that team who have been unfairly projected upon because of what some more hardcore anti Red Bull fans think about their team and their ownership. And it's not as simple as that. And I wish more people took a little bit out of critical thought, reflective thought, realized that not a lot of people have the the power to go with their morals that deeply to think, oh yeah, this whole team's racist. I'm not going to work for them. Right. It's not- yeah, and, and the thing is, like, it's mm. it's not just your team. It's your place of employment. It's right. It's the place where you bring home a paycheck to pay for your basic necessities. Right. If if you're in a position where you could just simply quit on moral grounds, you are financially better off than the vast majority of society. Yeah. To that end, like like 
there's a lot of uh, very <laughs> terrible things that Jeff Bezos does as the G- CEO of Amazon. But like if everybody that worked at Amazon was as much of a wealth hoarding union busting asshole as Jeff Bezos was, there would be no attempts to unionize parts of Amazon's workforce like we're seeing. It's a complicated one. It always is. Cam, I know you wanted to say something as well. Uh, I'm just echoing the sentiment here. And, you know, I kind of look at it as that really having got into F1 maybe a little bit late, I don't really know a Formula One without his direct influence. Yeah. Does, does, does the sport survive the 2008 financial crisis if he doesn't pour money into two teams and a bunch of other drivers? Yeah, we're down. We're down two teams, and you know you can you can talk about kind of what alternate timelines that springs up. But then the team that he invested in, the team that would go on to win four consecutive and then one this year, think of how different F one looks. It's, it's it's almost it's almost hard to imagine. It's just it's hard to separate his positive impact on the sport, and it had there has been positive impact from the fact that off the track he had ext- as mentioned just abhorrent views upon the world. Mm. But then, unfortunately, we watch motorsport. Yeah, yeah, and chances are, if you watch motorsport. If you watch motorsport, there's a pretty good chance you root for someone who's re- whose worldview is really not aligned with yours. Yeah, yeah and as um, plenty of the drivers, like, F1 was the sport that he cared most about. But as many of the drivers mentioned, there have been thousands of Red Bull athletes across various sports. Mm. Like, his impact in the sports world in general goes without saying. Yeah, it's 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 incredible the amount of influence. Like we 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 barely scratched the surface. Like we, we, we don't have many, enough time on the show. Yeah, yeah. how many sports events? Like, how many sports events and entities are backed by Red Bull? Literally dozens. You've probably watched a bunch of them without even realizing half the time. You know, it's it's an incredible amount of influence, and as sports fans, it, that's impossible to ignore. It's impossible to put that in the corner. And just say, ah, well, you know, fucking, he's a terrible person. But no, look, I have cheered for athletes backed by him. You're talking yep. to the, one of the world's biggest Sebastian Vettel fans, and you were uh, there through all the to- for all the good times, the bad times, the popular times, the unpopular times. That's like, just, yeah. and we're saying that this not not to you know diminish, not to humanize this guy, not to hum- humanize, this, but like you can't you can't say that just because you are backed or work for Red Bull, you agree with his opinions. Right. Exactly. It's 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 complicated. They uh, it's it's not simple. It's not straightforward. You've got to be critical and about this and you've got to, you know, piece up the layers and obviously you're entitled to whatever view you want to believe or want you know, regarding it, but it's not as straightforward as he's a shithead or I I, you know. I think I'd use the example mm. where uh obviously over the past month, uh, W Series decided, you know, for financial reasons, not to complete their season this year. Mm. And a lot of people on social media immediately called out to, to, to Formula One and to Lewis Hampton, why don't you invest money in W Series? Why don't you spend your money on X thing? And most, obviously, almost all of them made no comment about it. Uh, but you know, 15 years ago, Dietrich did the thing. He, he put, he put the money into, into not only formula one, but into helping talented young drivers get to formula one. The chances are, if you want to see that change in the world, one of the people behind that change, that, that, you know, dumping in of money, that money has to come from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And if you have that kind of money, there's chance there, there's a better than zero chance that those are ill-gotten gains. Yeah. yeah, I've always said, if you're a billionaire, there's a very good chance you've probably exploited humanity at some point to amass that much wealth. That's It's just how we go. And unfortunately, motorsports are the most expensive 
entry levels, you know, barriers of entry when it comes to sport in the world. Chances are people got their money from not nice ways. It's something we have to deal with every week that we watch. And this Our is condolences just to everyone at the extended Red Bull Racing family and to everyone at Haas. Indeed. It's like, it's tough, but it better tough. days are ahead. Um, let's end it on a positive note and mm. talk about, you know, what else we loved about what many are saying, what I think we're all saying in, around the table. Race of the year. What else do we love? Dre, I'll give you the floor on this one. The church is in fucking session. <laughs> Praise be and glory to Sebastian Vettel. Oh, Amen. God. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm he who sitteth out. at the right hand of Mike Crack, for whom no <laughs> reverence is given. <laughs> the right hand of Mike Crack. Dude. What a drive. I, Astonishing. I... Asked, I I, I wanted to be cheeky and and call back to his famous quote on the radio in 2013. Mm. And I asked him, like, are these one of the good times that you'll cherish when all uh, when thinking about your last years in the sport? Because, like, Dre, just tell him how good a job Sebastian Vettel did. God, he, he led laps. He led multiple he laps. He led laps in an Aston Martin. He led laps in an Aston Martin. He was running... In the top five, pretty much of the entire first two thirds of the race, um, he was probably good for a sixth place finish on the day. And then on his final pit stop, some sort of wheel gun error, I think it was. It was a 17 second pit stop. And I literally joked on Twitter that I kicked the church font through the stained glass window in rage, thinking. No, not again. No, no, not another one. Of the, we're not going to be screwed that, by that, my own church. That, that best Aston Martin result was looking real dodgy. Oh, God. It, 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 for a second, I thought, we're going to go from 22 points to zero here. And that would have been an absolute disaster because it is genuinely really close for sixth in the championship right now between four different teams. It is Alfa wrong. Romeo scored 51 points in the first nine races of this season. Mm. They have scored one since. Exactly. They are falling out of the sky at 40,000 feet per minute, and the plane is already breaking up over the ocean. Yeah, it's it's rough out here. So for Seb to come back, despite that, on a new set of tires at the end, and finish in got seventh now post-Alonso penalty, um, might be eighth, we'll have to wait and see. But and put the works on Alex Albon and Kevin Magnuson on the way there. Everybody's going to grave about Kevin Ma- that move on Kevin Magnuson at turn 19 on the it's last lap. It's an incredible because, final yeah, lap. That's, that, was, that was awesome. I'm not disputing that, and they love that shit. I don't think the move that he did around the outside of Hayden Hill, the, the back half of that quad apex corner, around mm. the outside of Alex Albon to get ninth. That, oh, yeah. That, to me, was like, (laughs) remember, when Vettel was at the peak of his powers and at the most polarizing he ever was, a lot of people thought that shit like this was outside of his capabilities. Mm. Sebastian Vettel, God. Four-time champion of the world to you. (laughs) Four-time champion of the world. I mean, we could all just like we could all go around the table and just like pick some master medals or try for the race outside the top three. We could. Well, the and the scary did. thing is, and yep, two driver of the day awards in a row. And you actually you do get the award for that. So, you know, additional additional things for the shelving in the church. Yes. You could have given like five people driver of the day. Mm. Verstappen for being the unstoppable force to which there was no immovable object. Lewis yep. Hamilton for driving the fucking Mercedes into the ground to get it to P2. Mm. Leclerc recovering from a grid penalty. Alonso recovering from low Earth orbit to get it back <laughs> in the points. Until it wasn't. Until it wasn't. Can I, Still a can fantastic I also, drive. Can I also shout out Yuki Sonoda break, breaking his points duck despite he completely... points. He bogged it down off the start and still was plus five at the end of the opening lap. Now, granted, the Sainz-Russell collision certainly helped matters, but... 
<laughs> more of this, please. More of this. Good yeah, shit from you. Uh, he needed that. He has left a lot of points on the table this year. Some of that's his team. A lot of it's on him. He needs more like these. Indeed, indeed. A I mean, like, a, a fantastic race. King, any other favorites? Uh, no, got everything covered. Uh, and we also talked about Alonzo's not drive to seventh place. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh. It, was still, it was still a good drive. Hey, shout out Lando Norris as well, like oh, single-handedly yeah. carrying McLaren. I don't want to get into Daniel Ricciardo spiraling into total depression at oh. a track that has usually been so good at hit to him. Like, like Ricardo I, was on the struggle, but I mean, he was. It wasn't a couple of tenths. It was like the better part of a second off, pretty much all weekend. It's it's going yeah. out with a fizzle. Um, and beyond that, Kevin Magnuson for having a complete train wreck of a strategy to get into eighth. More points <laughs> for Haas. They broke their duck. Uh, haven't scored since Austria. 36 laps on the medium tire. 36. Twice get, as long as they're supposed to go. They completely fell off the cliff. Someone get Mick Schumacher out of the bus and give him some of this fortune, too. God. Can they, can they, yeah. can they please stop fucking that man, please? Raw? Like, honestly, this is, this is, this is ridiculous. You know, considering like, everything that happened, Seb could have fought Russell for fifth, which is just... <laughs> Speaks to the quality of the drive that Seb put in. Oh yeah, it, we are. A, we're going to have to rescind this floppy award. <laughs> <laughs> now, like Aston Martin, up from the depths of these pits, you, 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 the you laughing the, uh, stocks of Formula One for half a season. They're going to snipe sixth in the constructors. <laughs> yeah, like just 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 before we get out of here, how close this fight is. Alfa Romeo is sixth on fifty two. Aston Martin are seventh on fifty-one. Haas are eighth on thirty-eighth. Alpha Tauri, the team that always challenges for the top five, are ninth on thirty-six. <laughs> Alpha Tauri are hot trash this year. Alpha Tauri are in big, big trouble. They have a serious chance of finishing ninth this year. Ninth. That's, that's just vintage minority for you. Crazy, crazy, like, like, like that, like the midfield bloodbath is going to be all over the place in that fight for sixth place. Aston Martin might shit house sick out of what's was deemed a wretched season at the start of the uh, year. After they had to throw away their first car, <laughs> yeah, like this shit <laughs> is wild to say the least. What a time we had! May the fun times keep on rolling as the crazy train heads to Mexico. This weekend for Formula One, three rounds to go. Mexico coming up next. Like, like if, if we can wish into the sky for a Checo win, just because I want to see what happens to his dad if Checo wins I this race. Want to see what rest. happens to the crowd? <laughs> I want to see a full scale track invasion on the cool down lap. It, it's it's going to be Mansell. It's going to be Mansell at Silverstone all over again. Like they will go bananas if Perez wins his home race. If there's one round that you want Perez to win, it's this one. Well, maybe, maybe not from a safety standpoint. We'll have to wait and see. Mexican Grand Prix this weekend. Do check that out already. Next up on the Motorsport 101 hit list, MotoGP in Malaysia. And hey, who wanted round three between Francesco Bagnaia and Anaya Bastianini? Yes? Yes. More of that. That's coming up right after this. But in the meantime, please, you can find us one more time. YouTube.com forward slash Motorsport 101. Facebook, same address. Instagram, Motorsport 101 pod. Twitter, at motorsport underscore 101 our handles at harrison 101 hd at rj o'connell at ryan eric king and at c buckley 917 our website motorsport101.com for extra written content and of course as well if you really like us you can back us financially on patreon patreon.com forward slash motorsport 101 check us out if you haven't already I've been Dre Harrison. They've been RJ O'Connell, Cam Buckley, and Ryan Eric King, everybody. Great to have him back as ever. And celebrated by doing a burnout in his drive. Um, <laughs> until next time, sayonara. Later, y'all. Wait, where's the awkward goodbye? Bye. <laughs> there it is. <laughs>